Hello, welcome to this optional video. Well done for clicking on it. I hope I'll make it worth your while. Um, so let's say we take an hour of time. Here it is, this is the hour of time. And we are getting phone calls. And we make a note of when the phone calls come in. Now, there's two ways of thinking about this. If we split the time up, say into 15 minute intervals, then we can think of it as a binomial. And we could say X is the number of subsections of time, so in this case 15 minutes, in which a phone call is taken. So I've split the time up into these four 15 minute intervals and a success is getting a phone call. So this is a binomial four and you can see from my Poisson, which is the number of phone calls per hour, so that's what I expect over all of this, I expect six overall. So in each 15 minute period I'm expecting to get uh, three over two. So that would be what the binomial looks like. So I might get a phone call here, might get a phone call here, might get one there, might get one, there, that's it. So x is 3. What if I was thinking about this as a, as a Poisson? So if y is the number of phone calls per hour, then I'm not interested in the, the subdivisions. It's literally just how many phone calls did I get. So in this case, y is 3. So obviously Poisson and uh, binomial are very, very similar. They can be used to model the same thing just by looking at it in a slightly different way. And as you can see here, the number of phone calls is 3, x is 3, y is 3. But this might not always be the case. What if this phone call had come in a minute earlier and was actually here instead of there? Then my x would now be 2. There's only two sub-periods of time, this one and this one, in which I had a success, in which I had a phone call, whereas y is 3. Now, we could make these come out more similar more often by increasing the number of subdivisions of time. So what if I make it now split up into eight? So it's now eight subdivisions of time. So binomial eight. And we're expecting six overall. So um, e in each little subdivision of time, I've split it into eight. That would be uh, now six over eight, which is three over four. So the probability would be three over four. And now x is 3 again, woo, because I got one success here, one success here, and one success here. But obviously, you know, no matter how much I increase my n of my binomial, it could be the case that I get two phone calls in one subdivision of time, and then my uh, plus on my binomial would come out differently. The, the numbers would be different, the result would be different. But hopefully you can see that if I take this 8 and increase it to 16 and then 32 and then a million billion trillion, then basically these are going to become indistinguishable. The result I get when I model it as plus on is the result I get when I model it as binomial. So in a sense, well not in a sense, actually really, the Poisson distribution is the binomial distribution where the number of events gets uh, increased and increased and increased and increased and increased over this fixed period of time or space that we're considering with the, with the Poisson distribution. So this enables us to get a formula for the probability of the Poisson distribution from the formula for the binomial distribution, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's have a go. So what we're saying is the probability that y equals something is going to be the same as the limit as n tends to infinity of the probability that x equals that thing, where x is binomial and y is Poisson. So if we take the binomial and take n to infinity, then we'll get the Poisson. So what do we know about this formula, limit n tends to infinity? It's n choose x, then we've got p, to the power of x, and then because that happens x times, and 1 minus p to the n minus x. But what's p? Well, p, well, it's not so much what's p, it's how can I connect p with my Poisson distribution. Now, the Poisson distribution has average lambda. Obviously, that needs to be the same for the Poisson and the binomial, because we're talking about the same experiment, the same, same situation. And the mean for a binomial is np. So p is lambda over n, and I can sub that in. Limit n tends to infinity. I can also use the formula for n choose x, n factorial over x factorial, n minus x factorial, p, which is lambda over n, 
to the x, 1 minus p, which is lambda over n, to the n minus x. And I'm just, I'll box that off so it's out of the way. And I'm just going to, hopefully you're happy with this, because it's just GCSE indices, just to save me a bit of room. Okay. Now I'm going to use a rule that you learn properly at university, which is that the limit of two things times together, say f of x and g of x, as x is going to something, doesn't matter, infinity, zero, two, whatever, is equal to the limit of the f of x one times the limit of the g of x one. So that's handy. So what we can basically do is take all of these things that we've got in here separately, that one, that one, that one, and that one, and find out what they're doing as n goes to infinity, and then multiply all them together. Now the other thing I'm going to do is just point out that something like lambda to the power of x has got nothing to do with n. So if I make n bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, lambda to the x is just lambda to the x. So nothing's happening. x factorial is just x factorial. So as I make n bigger and bigger and bigger, x factorial is just x factorial. Lambda to the x is lambda to the x. So that particular part lambda to the x over x factorial, the limit as n tends to infinity is going to be really simple. Actually, I think I need a bit more room for this step. So I'll go back here. So we've got the limit as n tends to infinity of lambda to the x over x factorial, and I've deliberately chosen those bits because they've got nothing to do with n, times the limit as n goes to infinity of n factorial over n minus x factorial, n to the x, so that's this bit, this bit, and this bit. Then I've got the limit as n tends to infinity of 1 minus lambda over n to the n. And I've got the limit as n tends to infinity of 1 minus lambda over n to the minus x. And I'm going to treat all four separately and then multiply together the result of each. This first one, as I say, n goes to infinity. Nothing happens, nothing happens. Just stays like that, so that's easy. Lambda to the x over x factorial. Okay, next one. Ooh, more complicated. Let's come back to this one. Uh, this one here, this is a standard formula, this one. And um, I've done another video, I think, on the C3 section about this. This is a standard formula. In fact, it's one of the definitions of e to the minus lambda. So I'll just put that down here. If you're interested, go to the C3 section. So limit n tends to infinity, 1 plus x over n to the n is e to the x. So therefore, if we place the replace the x here with a minus lambda, then this will be a minus lambda. So uh, this second bit here is e, put in brackets here, e to the minus lambda. That's quite cool. That's that one done and that one done. Right, what about this last one? So we've got n going to infinity. The only n is here. Everything else is staying the same. So n gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So it doesn't even matter what lambda is. This gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, which means this becomes basically 1 minus nothing, which is 1. And then we do 1 to the power of minus x. So that's 1 over 1 to the power of x. But 1 to the power of anything is just 1. So basically, eventually, this is just going to get closer and closer and closer to 1. So that's that one done. Nothing exciting happens. So here's our complicated one here but it's not going to be complicated as soon as I write this in a different way I'm going to cancel that off the bottom you've probably seen me do this before in various contexts so we're going to write the top as it's not a pen n n minus 1 n minus 2 la 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 so these numbers are getting bigger the thing we're subtracting is getting bigger so somewhere down the line we get n minus x oops minus 1 and then n minus x, and then these are getting bigger, n minus x plus 1, and it goes all the way down, and then eventually we'd get to 2 and 1. And on the bottom, we've got n minus x factorial, which is n minus x times n minus x plus 1 times, or n minus x minus 1, that, that bit there. This is n minus x minus 1. So this is going down 1, down 1, down 1 all the way down to 2 times 1, and all of that cancels all of that. And then on the bottom, we've also got this n to the x. But how many how many actual terms have we got here? We've got 1, 2, 
blah, 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 just using these numbers to count. X minus 1, but then another one. So actually we've got X terms here. And on the bottom we've got N to the X, which is N times N times N times times N. OK, let's see if that helps. Let me just shrink things down a little bit. That's better. So uh, we've got lambda to the x over x factorial times e to the minus lambda, which is 1, let's put that on there, on the top, times this limit, which is n over n times n minus 1 over n times n minus 2 over n times blah 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 times n minus x uh, plus 1. I just took the brackets out over n. Now, this one is 1. This one is 1 minus 1 over n. This one is 1 minus 2 over n. This one is 1 minus x over n minus 1 over n. Now, what happens is n goes to infinity. Okay, obviously 1 is just 1. n goes to infinity, this goes to 0, this goes to 1 n goes to infinity, this goes to 0, this goes to 1. n goes to infinity, this goes to 0, this goes to 0, this goes to 1. They all go to 1. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. Leaving us with the formula for a Poisson distribution, lambda to the x, uh, it were actually